doctors managed to pull a rabbit out the hat somehow and find her in quite a dense thick area. So I'm just trying to get in here quickly and I'm going to position. I don't see any sign of the little one yet. It's just her on the mound and there we go. So the belated birthday present that I owed Ali, not my Ali, as in Ali that guides with us and presents with us, but there's Ali, a viewer, who asked me very nicely to find Shadow on her birthday. There we go. Finally, we have managed to find her about two weeks later, and you can see she's resting really nicely in the shade of the mound. I wonder if the little one will come out maybe a little bit later within, once all the cars have settled, that the little tracks will come, or the little cub will come and bound out towards mom on the mound. But isn't that a sight for sore eyes? Long time since we've seen Shadow, and there's been so much activity of hers around around this area that I'm surprised that we haven't actually seen her more often. We keep finding tracks for her, but now at least we get to spend some really quality time with our leopard. She's still looking ever so pretty. She's a little bit on the skinnier side now that I can see her stomach nicely. So it would be good for her to grab a meal. Hopefully she'll get something in the next few days or even tonight. There's lots and lots of prey animals on our way to get here from where those elephants were. We had some uh, kudu, we had steenbok, we had daker, we had zebras. So there's lots of food and impalas, lots of food items in this general vicinity. So I'm hoping that she's going to be able to find something this evening and at least fill that belly and hopefully the big guy Tingana is not around that actually then steals it from her. As you can see, she's just watching what's going on. I'm sure she's going to fall asleep shortly. Once all the vehicles settle down a little bit, you're going to find that it's quite a warm afternoon still. And so being up on a mound like this, she's now gotten onto the side where the shade is. And she's going to be perfectly situated to have a really good afternoon nap. There you go, you can see how shady it is on the side of the mound, so she's chosen very well. And from up there, she's also going to be able to see what's going on around here. If there are any signs of um, Stienbok or Dikers or Impalas, she's going to be able to see them really nicely from here. She's just watching the coming and going of what's happening. So Tax is just trying to position himself better. It's a difficult area that we're in because of the amount of vegetation there is here. It's tough to get three vehicles kind of situated in one place. So we're just waiting for Tax just to sort out and then I'm sure she's going to start getting a little bit more sleepy again. Dead hit Tom. You want to know how old her current cub is? Well, her current cub is just over eight months old. So the first time we saw any sign of Shadow giving birth was around New Year's. We had a sighting of her on Simba Mili where she had a leopard, I mean, she had an impala carcass and she was feeding and all of a sudden she got up and started running from the carcass and she was heavy, heavy pregnant at that stage. She ran and she went towards the drainage line and the guys found her the next morning and she was no longer pregnant. So we know that she gave birth around New Year's. It was, either, I think it was the 1st or 2nd of January and then that cub was born, or well, two cubs were born and unfortunately one was lost. So it's now just over eight months old, which is means that it's getting to the age where the likelihood of it being more independent is, is or being able to survive um, is, is better. So it's able to climb trees now, it's able to maneuver around, and that means that it's really going to have a much better chance of living. We know that with Shongila and Hosanna, they were abandoned at one year old or unfortunately orphaned or whichever way you want to look at it, and they were able to survive. So that little cub is getting to that age now where the chances of survival are getting better and better as the days go on. So looking forward to seeing that cub more often and hopefully getting a lot more sightings of it. It's difficult because she spends a lot of time off our traverse. She spends time south of the boundary in Hofmanns, which is very little traverse for many people at all. And so it's not seeing as many cars and that's why it's still a little bit on the nervous side. So what I'm hoping is that Shadow is going to spend a lot more time here over the next few months and we'll be able to actually then see the cub and spend a lot more time with the cub and the cub will be able to relax around the vehicles. In fact, the last sighting I had with her in the cub was very special. We had The cub was super relaxed around us and we had some great sightings. Toby, you want to know how big Shadow is? Well, I'm not sure if you're asking in terms of weight or in terms of just in relation to some of the other leopards that we see here, but 
Toby, in, in terms of relating to the other leopards that we see, like Tandi and, and the varying others, she's a smaller female, which so is Tandi. They're very similar in size. Remember, they are sisters, so they're not the biggest females out here. But make no mistake, they still pack a serious punch, these two females. The two sisters, have I've seen them both bring down very large animals, and they might be on the smaller side, but they make up for that with their attitude. They both are pretty good at being keeping things at bay and, and bringing down quite large items so even though she's a little on the smaller side she's still definitely capable to hold her own and she obviously didn't like her dust too much you can see a little tail twitched a little bit right well we're definitely going to spend probably the majority of our day with shadow now that she's relaxing on the mound and so while we sit and admire the view let's go back to tara in the tent and see what she's busy conjuring up in her lab well, we haven't really repositioned other than that Shadow has walked. She's moved quite far south from where we last had her. So she's now up a different termite mound and all we've got is a tail. That's all we can really see at this stage. She's completely flat there. And the bad news is that she's not walking very well at all. So she looks like she's got a sore front paw that she's hobbling a little bit on. So I think that's why she's a little bit skinny. She's probably had a, a little bit of an issue the last few days. Hopefully it will be okay. I can't see any sign of a wound or anything like that, but she certainly doesn't, is not walking with any comfort whatsoever. So hopefully it will just be something that will eventually disappear and we won't have to worry about too much. But she certainly is a tired cat. Now that she's up on the mound, she's taking it very easy. And you can see she's gone flat. There's her head on the other side there, just having a little bit of a nap. The thing is, is that even though her front paw is is sore and the way that she's walking looks horrific, it doesn't look good, she actually managed to scale this mound as though she was a normal leopard. So I think it's more a fact that maybe she's got a, a thorn inside there or something that's causing a little bit of distress and it'll eventually go away and she'll be okay because if this if I tell you this mound is very tall it's not a small mound at any stretch of the imagination and it takes a lot of effort for anybody to get up there it's steep and so if she can get up there then she's still able to move around when it counts so she'll still be able to go after food if she needs to and be able to hunt if she needs to so it's not that big an issue just yet i don't think but i'm warning you if she does walk that it does doesn't look as good as it should she's not even putting weight on that front right leg at the moment so hopefully it will just be a minor thing and eventually it will dissipate and she'll be okay it's never nice when you see these kind of things and it's always something that us as guides is, is probably one of the hardest things about being out here when you see an animal that's in a little bit of discomfort but it is nature she doesn't like i say have anything that's on her foot or around her leg or anything like that so the interesting part about it is we were chatting to some of the trackers that were tracking her yesterday and they were saying that her tracks were normal yesterday there was no sign of any injury yesterday she wasn't hobbling because when a leopard hobbles if it it will drag one of its feet and it becomes actually quite noticeable in the tracks so there was no sign of that yesterday which means that it either happened during the day today or it happened last night and so that's why i think it must be a potential thorn in the foot or maybe she just sprained it slightly when she was chasing after something and just a little and so today is about resting and keeping that foot up and not giving too much pressure on it and then as it starts to heal up she'll be all right again so hopefully that's going to be the case either way it took a lot of effort for her to get up on top of this mound and I'm hoping that she decides just to rest up for the day and the evening here and then starts again tomorrow with a foot that hopefully is feeling a little bit better. Toby, you're asking if the leopard ladies all get along. Toby, not necessarily. So you'll find that even Shadow, if she comes across Tundi, who is her sister, will most certainly be aggressive towards her. And the reason why is because she's now a territorial animal. That's That bond between her and her sister is broken. There's no longer that bond anymore. She's now severed that bond. And so they now compete for territory. They fight with one another. They make sure that they try and keep one another um, at bay because they're trying to protect resources so den sites food items water availability and so they will be highly aggressive towards each other we saw it the other day with shongile and tingana and tandi when shongile was there um, we're speaking to the guys at swords that 
sitting down and Tundi's presence made Shungile feel very uncomfortable and you'll find that Tundi would have probably been more aggressive towards her than what Tingana would have been and so females definitely will fight with one another given the chance. It's amazing the camouflage though and you can see why sometimes these cats are very difficult to spot. If you are on a road you would struggle to see that on top of the mound. Her spots blend in absolutely perfectly and there's that long tail is the only thing that would give it away. Otherwise you would have to really look hard to see any sign of this particular individual. Now a lot of you are wondering where the cub is. I'm not 100% sure. The tracks for the cub was inside here with her. Um, just no sign of the cub. She hasn't contacted call, She hasn't contact called the cub yet. But there was fresh tracks this morning of that cub. So hopefully the cub is around here somewhere. And maybe as the sun starts to dip she'll start calling and the little cubby will come out. And we'll be able to spend some time with it. But she most certainly hasn't called or, or made any sort of vocalizing noises to to bring the cub in and we certainly haven't seen any sign of the cub other than the footprints that were around this morning that were from last night crossing into this area so the cub seems to be in fine fettle because the tracks that we had this morning was it running all over the place up and down the road and so that one seems to be fine i'm sure it's just lying down somewhere enjoying a bit of shade and shadow will hopefully call it out a little bit later It'd be interesting to know just how big Shadow's cub has gotten. It's been a few weeks or months since we've seen that cub and it will be interesting to see the size difference between when we last saw it and now because if it's already getting close to eight months then it means that that cub will be quite a lot bigger than when we last saw it and it, it will go through a quick growth spurt now towards a year. We know that Shongile caught a massive growth spurt from her sort of nine ten months to just over a year she's grown quite a lot since then so i'm sure shadow's little cub will also do the same but there we go that's camouflage for you quite clearly so xavier you're wondering what the most common prey item is for the leopards of the sabi sands well in this area most commonly they're going after impalas that's pretty much what they target mostly just given that there's a high percentage of impalas here they will also go frequently for dacre and steenbok and then also birds mongoose and varying other things but impala seems to be the top of the menu for when it comes to a leopard and like i say it's because of the amount of um, impalas that are here it just means that that's the easiest animal generally to find so that's why they spend a lot of time hunting those now I think a lot of people are struggling to be able to see Shadow there's other vehicles and I'm just listening to the guides trying to explain where exactly she is but I don't think they can see her because she's lying in a way that if with the sun is very tough to actually see on top there unless you're at our angle where the tail is easily visible but that's one sleepy cat that's for sure well not much has changed as you can see she's still flat on the top of her termite mound her legs and tail is all that is visible at the moment so still taking it very easy and I would imagine that maybe with this injury that she's got she's dragged herself around a little bit today and is probably quite exhausted given that she did walk quite a bit from where that previous termite one was all the way to here so once that sun goes down it'll be an indication of whether or not she actually is going to get up and start moving but for now she seems to be very flat and, and very sleepy you can see quite nicely that longer more elongated back leg that we see on leopards so I find that those there are, are designed all to keep the leopard's speed up so and they'll have much longer almost marathon like legs as opposed to the front legs which are the power legs that get that initial burst for them to be able to run and, and catch or surprise an animal and these ones will then provide a bit of speed over a longer distance but those paws have seen many a kilometer you can see or miles should we say you can see that they're quite well worn and lots of it's become very hard and calloused and so she'll be able to walk over all kinds of things with those without having to worry too much. And you can also see very clearly now the three lobes that we always talk about on the back of the foot. So 
they're always there and then the pores that are quite tight up against the pad so I know Tyra was referring to it yesterday I think must have been yesterday morning or previous morning when she was tracking that lion and she was talking about how the lion's toes tend to be much further away from the pad than the leopards and you can see there the leopard's toes are right up against the pad itself not too much space between them you can also see that the pad itself, even though the foot will look slightly bigger, the pad itself is much, much smaller than what the actual feet are with all the fur and everything else that you see there. Nice big oval shape as well. Now, interesting enough, with some of these animals, if you actually have a look at their pads, sometimes you can find certain markings that are in the pad itself that allow you to then follow the track and be able to see that it is that exact individual. There was a leopard down in the south of Sabi Sands called Shovo, and Shovo had a cross in his track. So it was a scar that he had on his foot in the shape of a cross, and when he walked, you would actually see the cross in the track itself, and you were able to then work out that it was him just from the sand marks that were left behind. So each of these animals do have these individual shapes, and imagine if we actually took molds of each track when they had walked around and we knew exactly who it was. It would be quite cool to see if we could pick up any little nuances in any of our cats that we see up here and see if we couldn't actually learn their tracks a little bit. It might be quite a cool exercise to do at some point, particularly when we get the rainier months and we get nice big muddy pug marks. Those are much easier to make molds of and then we can look in the tent and see if we can't find any sign, any signs under the microscope. Now, Apparently Alice says she can certainly help us with that. Well, Alice, yes. Alice is very into art, and, and so is Megan. And the two of them are often playing with Plaster of Paris, and I've seen all kinds of bits of Plaster of Paris on tree bark and on sand and on all kinds of things as they've made shapes and creations. And so they most certainly would be able to help us. It would be quite nice, actually, I think, to get a whole bunch of those tracks and get them for the tent it would be cool to get the Birmingham boy collection or the Inkuma pride or some of our leopards and actually have the real footprints in the tent that we could talk about I think that's a project that maybe we should start doing or we'll carry around a bit of plaster of Paris mix with us and and try and set out some of them the problem with them is it's got to dry and sometimes they then get ruined by other animals but it certainly will be a good experiment you can see the Sun is just set now off to the right so just behind the Drakensbergs it's now dropped down towards Maripskop, which is where our radio connections are and actually where all of this gets to you guys. So signal gets sent onto the top of that mountain and then get broadcast around the world. So that's where it all happens, the magic. And it's also the magic of the sunset that's just taken place as well behind the mountains. It is a nice clear day actually. I'm surprised generally at this time of the year it's quite hazy, but um, you can see today is actually quite clear. Now, Chantal, can you just repeat the name for me? Because I didn't get that very clearly. So, Spidey, you were wondering how we broadcast from the bush and how we have Wi-Fi and internet out here. Well, Spidey, we're fortunate in that the particular area that we're in at the moment, there's not too far, is actually a small town called Hutzbrate, and so there's quite a lot of businesses there that can help us with what goes on. Now in terms of actually how the broadcast gets sent out and how it's received and how it's amplified and all of those kind of things, I have absolutely no idea. Unfortunately, I'm not very into that side of things and the tech side of it, but we do have an incredible tech team with Connor and Alex and Peter and Jared and they all do unbelievable work to be able to bring this to all of you guys so somehow they connect all kinds of things as Brent says thingamajiggies and they get connected all together and then it gets pushed to all of you it still baffles my mind that we can sit here in the middle of the bush and be able to send you guys a signal all over the world of a wild leopard sitting on a termite mound it is absolutely incredible it's, it's something that still blows my mind on a day-to-day -day basis and it's just the biggest blessing to be able to do it to open it up to so many people around the world so so many people that could potentially not get you or not able to get into this area or whatever the case may be that they get the ability to watch and to witness and to see all of these animals on a live basis is absolutely amazing you can see she's fast asleep her eyes are not even open at the back their ears are not even twitching at this stage so she's really is very very sleepy
safari wild man you're wondering if she's going to try and climb a tree to protect herself overnight now i highly 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 doubt she's going to be able to climb a tree when i say when she was walking badly she's walking quite badly she's not really putting weight on that front leg she's carrying it up so to climb a tree requires pretty much their front legs mostly so they use massive amounts of power in from those chest muscles and those front legs that then grip onto the tree and then pull themselves up so i don't think she's going to be able to have the strength to do that with an injury on her front paw like that and it's probably why she's found this mound this mound is massive and is quite steep and it's going to be difficult for other animals to find her up there even her scent and things like that is going to be above the level of things like hyenas and lions and so hopefully she would be able to just to sit on top and go unnoticed and so that's probably why she went up this particular mound because she was sitting on the mound back then she kind of saw this one and walked straight to it she didn't even divert in her movement at all straight up and then lay on top immediately so maybe that's why she's gone up there is just to seek a bit of refuge while she nurses this injury but I think climbing a tree would be a step too far for her at this stage it really like I say, it looks as though she's in quite a bit of discomfort, so I don't think that she would be able to exert that energy or even have the ability to climb the tree properly right now, unless it was in a life or death situation. If she had proper motivating factors, it's amazing what adrenaline can do and what can push through a body. I would imagine if lions were behind her or something like that, she would be able to get up, but I don't think she's going to voluntarily do it if she can help it. I think she's going to try to spend more time on an area like this where she can just rest and relax. Now I know a lot of you will be very worried about her and it, it is always a worrying thing and unfortunately it's going to be a situation where time is going to have to tell as to how things play out. Like I said, the, the fact that she got up this mound is an encouraging sign already. At the end of the day, this mound, like I said to you, is very steep and it, it didn't, she couldn't just get up there hobbling. She had to run up there and so she did put a bit of weight on her front leg. It probably hurt a little bit but she did get up and she did manage and so that means if the adrenaline pumps when she's hunting or if she's being chased by anything, it should be enough to get her through and get her out and about and, and out of an, the danger zone or able to then get some sort of food item. So I think she'll be okay. It's going to be, like I say, interesting to try and see her over the next couple days and see if it gets any better or if she carries on holding it the way she is but I'm hoping it's just a little slight sprain and it's very sensitive today but by you know a day or two's time it starts she starts putting pressure on and slowly but surely it eases up now if you need a bit more encouragement than that there was a lioness down in the south of the Sabi Sands called Flopier or Mandlev and she's known and she actually walked around with a dislocated hip for over a year she had this hip where she only walked on three legs and she still managed somehow to survive she didn't she wasn't even with the pride at that stage look now she's going to get up let's see if she's going to walk you can see she's ginger in her movements when she's adjusting so that front leg it must be a little bit painful shame my girl it's not pleasant at all but Anyway, the, this female from the, this lion pride, she eventually, you know, the muscles and the ligaments and, and all that obviously healed around that dislocated leg and she actually came right. And if you see her now, she doesn't look as though she's had any damage to her leg whatsoever. So there is hope and there is always a bit of, um, you know, resilience from wild animals. They're far more resilient to us as people. And we sometimes see injuries and we think, oh, that's going to be a life-threatening injury and they come out of it. Uh, we've seen... You know, many of our lions have injuries, lots of our leopards have injuries and somehow these guys, the will to survive and that instinct to survive just kicks in and they're able to drag themselves through it. So hopefully that's going to be the case. She seems to have spotted something now. You see how her head is moving a little bit and she's just checking around. I wonder if there isn't maybe a prey item that she might have seen somewhere south of her that she's just watching just to see what's going on. At least we know that the Inkahumas have gone past her already last night. So the Inkahumas went into the west and have already walked through this area. So I doubt that they're going to be through here, which is a good thing for her. And also we know that Tingana has been busy with Tandi and, and then far south of us. So at least she should be uh, okay from those two threats. She'll be all right in being able to not have to manage any of that. And hopefully she'll be able to spend some time with her cub this evening and be all right. Shame, my girl. Sorry that you're not feeling well. Just readjusting, I think. I don't think she's going to get off the mound anytime soon. It looks as though she's just trying to get herself into a bit more of a comfortable position, as we can see. She's just fallen asleep now. <laughs> so 
I don't think she's going to be... Well, maybe not. Let's see. No, there she goes. So you'll see she's going to hobble her way around a little bit, unfortunately. The little tail is twitching somewhat. What have you seen? Now let's just see where she's going to go now off the mound. We've been sitting patiently with her. Oh no, she's just repositioning. You can see it's uncomfortable for her to sit. I'm just going to try and go around a little bit so we can try and see. And while I reposition, let's go back to Tara in the tent. And I'm sure she's still on all things leopards as she normally is. And so hopefully she'll have lots of more tidbits and information for all of you. Well, there we go, it's about as good a visual as you're going to get on binocular vision when it comes to a leopard. So it's a shadow just watching us. And at the moment, there's a few wildebeest that are just further down that she's been paying attention to. So just now, I was saying that she spotted something, and it was a herd of wildebeest that was walking in the background. They've subsequently actually moved off as a vehicle went past, and she's still just looking around, but still no sign of her calling at all for her cubs, or, or for her cubs, should I say. Um, she's still just sitting on the mound, watching around, and just taking in what's moving in this area. I would imagine that there is something else that she's seen now. I'm just trying to look in the distance to see if I can't see anything, because she's now fixated in a different area. It's not those wildebeest. Maybe there was some kudu. I saw kudu earlier in that direction as well as a steenbok. So I wonder if she hasn't spotted one of those. Doesn't she look beautiful up on that mound? Now, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but my piece doesn't seem to be wanting to stay together and so I believe a lot of you are loving this which is what I got from Chantel is I hope that's what I got from Chantel because it seems to have just my earpiece keeps coming apart it's got two little sections to it that keep kind of disjoining which I've now hopefully sorted out once and for all and I believe a lot of you are enjoying her up on the mountain that she looks beautiful up there it is very pretty when she sits like that with her head up and we can actually see her it's much better than what we had just now with just the little tail not that you don't have a good looking tail though it's just your face is prettier so you can see now this is a very interesting part is Tara's been talking a lot about leopards but we when we think about aging leopards and how we age a leopard, if you had to show a photo of that to somebody, I guarantee you that they will tell you that this is a young female. And the reason why is because a lot of people will try age leopards using their nose. And so they check the nose and they think a pink nose means that this animal is young, which we know in this case is untrue. So Shadow is a older female. I mean, she's now over 10 years old. And her nose is still completely pink but if you look at her ears now in relation to her nose you see lots of little nicks and screws and cuts out of there there's a few bits of termite damage I mean not termites tick damage I don't know why I said termites maybe because she's sitting on a termite mound, but there's a bit of tick damage there so that just shows you that she's a little bit on the older side so it's not always the nose that you can use when it comes to aging of a, of a cat so you need to use a number of different factors it is a little bit unusual that she does have still such a very pink nose i saw it also with quatile she used to have a fairly pink nose in her older years as well so it's not always that uncommon for cats to have it look at how her pupils are starting to get bigger and bigger as the sun's going down those pupils are dilating more and more to allow more light into the eye so she can see better. So Riti, you're asking why leopards enjoy being on top of mounds. Well, there's two reasons, Riti. One is a safety aspect. Being up there, she can see if there's any other potential danger items coming anywhere near her. So she can be able to see if, let's say, lions or hyenas or other leopards made their approach. And up there, her scent is not carrying around nearly as much. And so a lot of animals might miss her up there. 
The second reason is it's a great vantage point when looking for prey items. At this stage, she's starting to get into that dust period, which is a highly active period for leopard. Leopard tend to move around a lot just after sunset. Um, and so you'll find this is a, an in time of day when they actually do do a lot of hunting. And so from up there, she's able to spot prey items quite effectively and work out where she needs to position herself in order to be more successful when it comes to hunting. So that's why they favor mounds so much, is it's twofold. And sometimes you'll find even in the summer months, it's just to get a bit of a breeze up there as well to stay a little bit cooler. But look at that, isn't that spectacular? The colors in the background, leopard on top. It's about as good as it gets. So Michelle, you say she's so dainty looking. Well, it's a trait of Karula's female offspring. All of the females that I've seen have the same dainty appearance. So Tandi, Shadow, Shivinzi, and Shongile all do look the same. They have this kind of small, dainty appearance, and they all look very cute, actually. And I've always said that Tandi is probably one of the best-looking leopards, female leopards, particularly when she was younger. She had a very cute face, and Shivinzi was also a cute leopard. I always wonder where the Shivinzi ended up. I would love to know. Fortunately, she seemed to just disappear up into the Manuleti, and no one's really heard much about her since she's her disappearance. But Shongila as well. Shongila, I find, looks more like her mom than any of the others. She looks just like Karula, and especially in certain poses. It will be interesting as Shongila grows up if she's going to look, start to take on those same features that Karula did when she was an adult. It will be very cool to see. But we were talking about it last night, Tara and myself, and how these leopards from Karula's bloodline all look so similar. They they have that same genetic look to them. And then if you go on to the other side towards Salaesh and all of them, very different look that they've got. Right, now Shadow is watching a truck coming past and she's paying attention to that and we're going to carry on with her and hope that she finds something that she can potentially start stalking. So while we do that, let's go back to Tara who's now swapped her spotted coat chat for a more scaly, slithery skin to talk about. Well, we're just following her. She's just come down the mound now. And funnily enough, there's actually some wild dogs that are not far from here. And I wonder if she hasn't seen those dogs and that's why she's running. The dogs apparently are just inside Arethusa heading in this general direction. And you can see, look look at her, how she's battling to run and walk. She see she's hobbling quite badly, unfortunately. She's just stopped. I think she's seen those dogs and she's now trying to get into a place where she can get out of the way of them at this stage. Right, so let's just see what's going to play out here because like I say, these dogs are not far away. So we, if the dogs do show up, we will extend a little bit. But there we go. You can see now she's moving off again. Shame, my girl. you struggling with that foot. No, now she's lying down again. I'm just going to try and get forward a little bit. So she's just bounding off slightly. Where are you going, my girl? Shame. She's really struggling with this foot. It's, I think I'm actually going to leave her. I don't want to put any pressure on her anymore. I think with her watching what's going on and the way that she's walking it really is not something i really want to be with if the dogs arrive because her ability to maneuver herself is not going to be as easy and i don't want to attract too much attention to her at this stage shame she's just sitting behind you can see her watching there let's see if she's going to carry on now she's just stopped listening. I saw lots of cars just off to our side here so I would imagine that's where the dogs were. That's where I thought or well, heard that they were coming so I think she's come to investigate what's happening as well but it's not a good thing. Wild dogs when it comes to leopard are a problem. You'll find wild dogs will chase leopards at the first sign they can get so she needs to rather stay clear of that as much as possible. Now she's just watching. I don't know where those dogs must have gone to. They must have moved off. No, 
just want to see quickly here. I'm just looking. I've got a gap onto the road now, so I'm just having a little check to see if I can't see anything. But I don't see any sign of these dogs anywhere, so that's good news. Makes me a little bit happier that she's not got dogs anywhere too close to her. And so we'll actually stay a little bit longer now that the dogs are not here. They must have crossed further south of us, which is fantastic news. That's better. I would rather the dogs go further south. And as much as I would love to see the dogs on a, this particular occasion, I would rather they avoided us completely. And we'll try and see if we can't find them in the morning instead of them being with shadow now donny you say you feel the same i agree that i'd always love seeing the puppies and they are an extra special animal to see and we're fortunate that we can spend time with wild dogs here and they're not a common sighting but in this situation just for shadow's sake i would rather she didn't come across those dogs where are you going to go from here my girl Okay, but she's not really moving now, so it's fine. And I can hear now the dogs have moved off more south of us, which is good news. So they've gone more towards Zoe's side and the fire break area than they have this way, which is fantastic. So we don't have to stress anymore, which is good news. I'm quite glad about that. I was a bit worried about her for a second. Shame, my girl. It's not walking nicely at all. I wonder what else she spotted here because she must have seen something that she moved off. Sorry, Seb, I'm just taking the light away just to shine quickly in case there is anything else. But she must have spotted something in this particular vicinity because she came sort of bounding this way even with her with her bad leg. Right, so I just want to go around quickly. Now, Jonathan, you were wondering if she can hunt with her bad leg. Well, Jonathan, I'm not 100% sure if she would be able to. I, I think so, I suppose she will be okay. It's going to be interesting to see, like I say, over the next little bit, how she goes. And you see, she looks like she wants to maybe groom there. So, Seb, I'm going to just turn this light for you, Seb, instead. Shame, Michael. Take that spotlight off. Now, we definitely will try and find those dogs in the morning. It's been an incredible afternoon with the Ellies and getting the aerial views and all the info that Tara has imparted on us in the tent. And, well, spending time with shadows never ever the worst way to spend an afternoon so I'm certainly very thrilled that we got managed to find Shadow and we've managed to spend some quality time with her and I'll try and see if I can't find her again tomorrow morning or at least I'll actually think that Tara should come out this way it would be great for Tara to see Shadow and so hopefully she'll be somewhere close by and I don't think she's going to move around too much this evening but it's that time of the day unfortunately that we're going to say goodbye so from tara and senzo myself and sebastian we'll see you all on the sunrise safari well we're just following her she's just come down the mound now and funnily enough there's actually some wild dogs that are not far from here and i wonder if she hasn't seen those dogs and that's why she's running the dogs apparently are just inside arethusa heading in this general direction and you can see look look at her how she's battling to run in the walk she see she's hobbling quite badly unfortunately she's just stopped i think she's seen those dogs and she's now trying to get into a place where she can get out of the way of them at this stage Right, so let's just see what's going to play out here because like I say, these dogs are not far away. So we, if the dogs do show up, we will extend a little bit. But there we go. You can see now she's moving off again. Shame, my girl. you struggling with that foot. No, now she's lying down again. I'm just going to try and get forward a little bit. She's just bounding off slightly. Where are you going, my girl? Shame. She's really struggling with this foot. It's, I think I'm actually going to leave her. I don't want to put any pressure on her anymore. I think with her 
watching what's going on and the way that she's walking it really is not something I really want to be with if the dogs arrive because her ability to maneuver herself is not going to be as easy and I don't want to attract too much attention to her at this stage shame she's just sitting behind you can see her watching there let's see if she's going to carry on now she's just stopped listening I saw lots of cars just off to our side here so I would imagine that's where the dogs were that's where I thought or well, heard that they were coming so I think she's come to investigate what's happening as well but it's not a good thing wild dogs when it comes to leopard are a problem you'll find wild dogs will chase leopards at the first sign they can get so she needs to rather stay clear of that as much as possible now she's just watching I don't know where those dogs must have gone to they must have moved off I just want to see quickly here. I'm just looking, I've got a gap onto the road now, so I'm just having a little check to see if I can't see anything, but I don't see any sign of these dogs anywhere, so that's good news. Makes me a little bit happier that she's not got dogs anywhere too close to her. And so we'll actually stay a little bit longer now that the dogs are not here. They must have crossed further south of us, which is fantastic news. That's better. I would rather the dogs go further south. And as much as I would love to see the dogs on a, this particular occasion, I would rather they avoided us completely. And we'll try and see if we can't find them in the morning instead of them being with shadow now donny you say you feel the same i agree that i'd always love seeing the puppies and they are an extra special animal to see and we're fortunate that we can spend time with wild dogs here and they're not a common sighting but in this situation just for shadow's sake i would rather she didn't come across those dogs where are you going to go from here my girl Okay, but she's not really moving now, so it's fine. And I can hear now the dogs have moved off more south of us, which is good news. So they've gone more towards Zoe's side and the fire break area than they have this way, which is fantastic. So we don't have to stress anymore, which is good news. I'm quite glad about that. I was a bit worried about her for a second. Shame, my girl. She's not walking nicely at all. I wonder what else she spotted here because she must have seen something that she moved off. Sorry, Seb, I'm just taking the light away just to shine quickly in case there is anything else. But she must have spotted something in this particular vicinity because she came sort of bounding this way even with her with her bad leg. Right, so I just want to go around quickly. Now, Jonathan, you were wondering if she can hunt with her bad leg. Well, Jonathan, I'm not 100% sure if she would be able to. I, I think so, I suppose she will be okay. It's going to be interesting to see, like I say, over the next little bit, how she goes. And you see, she looks like she wants to maybe groom there. So, Seb, I'm going to just turn this light for you, Seb, instead. Shame, Michael. Take that spotlight off. Now, we definitely will try and find those dogs in the morning. It's been an incredible afternoon with the Ellies and getting the aerial views and all the info that Tara has imparted on us in the tent. And, well, spending time with Shadow is never, ever the worst way to spend an afternoon. So I'm certainly very thrilled that we got managed to find Shadow and we've managed to spend some quality time with her. And I'll try and see if I can't find her again tomorrow morning, or at least I'll actually think that Tara should come out this way. It would be great for Tara to see Shadow, and so hopefully she'll be somewhere close by, and I don't think she's going to move around too much this evening. But it's that time of the day, unfortunately, that we're going to say goodbye. So from Tara and Senzo, myself and Sebastian, we'll see you all on the Sunrise Safari.